My buddy shared a link to this Reddit post of a maze being solved with thousands of tiny particles ricocheting around in a flood fill sort of method. I am not entirely sure if they're also colliding with each other. I wondered if a simple 720 step 360 degree ricocheting ray cast would be any faster. I jumped into Unreal Engine 4, crudely rebuilt the original maze, set up some blueprints and gave it a whirl. Tests were one by one line traces with one millisecond delays between traces. For each hit, a new line trace would be ran from a reflected angle until one reaches the end and then the test is over. Initial results were fairly fast, though I forgot to track how many ray steps had been spawned. After the results, my buddy from before suggested I test two exits. The first tests were very quick because the closer exit was only a few bounces away. So the next test was ran until both exits were found. Results were as fast as you'd expect. This test was ran until all 720 steps found the end. Ran into a problem where some rays would get stuck at right angles and just bounce back and forth. Added a bit of random angle adjustment for each ricochet. That helped, but still took a very long time for all of them. As you can see, charging the rays was pointless at this point. They bounced so much they crossed nearly every single bit of the maze. Random tests were ran where there were no one-way hallways, opening the maze up quite a bit. I also dropped the number of steps and got some really cool patterns. Nearly looks like noise generation. Now let's get to what you're really here for. What's the project look like? You can also download the project from a link in the description. We recreated the original maze just using simple boxes scaled. We made a material just so that the, uh, the walls are always lit up. So what we need now is going to be three blueprints. We need a end zone blueprint. This would be where the ray hits when it reaches this. This is the end of the maze. We need a ray spawner blueprint. We need a ray blueprint. This will be what actually does the bounces. So the end zone is extremely simple. It's just a box collision. And that is it. We want this here. Let's go ahead and scale it. We're gonna bring it outside the maze just slightly. But not enough that it can slip through. Let's go ahead and make it wider. All right, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure it's in the, uh, the right spot. Yeah, see, it's way too low. Bring it up and let's go ahead and scale it on the, the Z as well. Don't need it, don't need it because nothing's being done on the Z axis at all. It's all going to be X and Y. All right, so the ray spawner, still fairly simple. We're going to go into the begin play here. We're going to create a delay it's just because we don't want it to start immediately. Mostly did this for recording purposes. All right, and we're going to create a for loop. And we're going to start the steps. So 720 steps, so basically that's, you know, every half step of a 360. Um, we're going to go ahead and spawn an actor. And that's going to be the ray blueprint. All right, let's go ahead and uh, expand transform here. So we're going to spawn everything from the same place that this, uh, this actor will be at. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and create a multiply because what we're doing is basically we're rotating the angles. Let's do this off of a division. So 360, 720 steps. That should create half steps. Go ahead and split our rotation here. We're going to just drop that in Z and just leave all these at uh, zero. Um, just for an extra little step, we're going to make this the owner. That is everything we're going to need for this. So basically the idea is when the game begins, it delays for two seconds, and then it runs a loop that creates 720 of the rays. And each one of them is rotated, you know, half a step more than the previous to create a full 720 step 360. 
go ahead and save that. We're not going to need that anymore. I'm going to close it. I don't need this anymore either. All right, this is the complicated one. Not really all that complicated, but there's more to it. Okay, so we're going to need the begin play again, but first we want to create a custom event. Now let's call this cast ray. And we want the begin play to start it. So the idea is, is when it begins, it shoots out the ray, which is going to be a line trace at the angle that it's facing based on what it was spawned at. And for every time it collides, it's going to check to see if that collision is with a uh, um, with the end game zone. Anything else, it will be a ricochet and bounce off. Uh, so let's create a branch here just because we want to be able to cancel this out. Let's promote this to a variable. We'll just call it stop. Clean that up. So if stop is set to true, we're not going to let it do anything. So now we're going to go line trace by channel and we're going to do get actor location. That'll be the start. We're going to get the forward vector. Oh my goodness, if I could just type. We're going to multiply that by 5,000 and we're going to add it to this. Clean this up a little bit. And that'll be our end. Okay, so basically it's going to start at this location, cast out 5,000 centimeters away. And that gives us our ability to uh, hit the walls. Uh, if, if we did anything too short, there's a chance that it, it would cast and hit nothing. And then obviously it won't work. We need it to be pretty far. Um, do the duration of one second to show these off. We don't need anything here because we only want to see where the collision area is. All right, let's go ahead and break the hit. Um, we're going to do another branch here. So this is just a uh, precaution. So if it doesn't hit anything, that means that the, the cast wasn't long enough. So let's go, uh, oh, distance isn't long enough. All right. Okay, so then if it does hit, we want to do a uh, check to make sure if it's the end zone or not. All right, so we're going to put it here. If it is the end zone, then that means we can stop, right? Okay, so if it is the end zone, we're going to go ahead and just print a message here. Reach the end, right? Alright, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and get the owner of this. This is what that was for earlier. Just in case the one of the earlier rays manages to reach the end of the maze before the rest are spawned, we don't want it to keep spawning them and keep bouncing and it's, it's just pointless. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and destroy it from spawning. Alright. And then we want to find all the other rays. Of class, I can't type right now. Find all the other rays. And we're just gonna simply tell them to stop. And now they shouldn't do any more bounces after their last bounce. Okay? So if we do hit a wall, which is what this would be coming off of, but it's not the end zone, we want to go ahead and set the new location for this ray because every time it hits we want to spawn it where it hits at and then rotate it for the reflection to start the next ray so we're going to do a set actor location and rotation all right um the impact point minus we're going to go ahead and drag off a uh, forward vector here. Make sure, make sure you see that. So this is the actor forward vector. We're just going to use it over here. All right, so we're going to do a multiply. And what that is, is basically we're just going to kick it out two centimeters from uh, the forward vector just to kind of move it out. And the reason for that is, is the impact point is right against the wall. So we want to pull it off the wall a little bit just so that whenever it does the next raycast, 
that it's not stuck in the wall and just falsely tripping and just bouncing off that same little spot in the wall. We want it to actually come off the wall so it can actually get a ray out. Um, let's go ahead and let's comment this uh, forward vector. That is big and ugly. Okay, we're gonna plug that into the location. All right, so now we gotta get the rotation, right? So this is extremely easy. So we're gonna pull off the normal and we're gonna get the reflection vector. Okay, so that's gonna be here. And then the direction's gonna be the forward vector, of course, right? And now we want to convert this into a rotation. Rotation from X vector. All right, let's go ahead and split this because we only want the Z. Teleport just for fun. All right, so now it should be rotated. Okay, so now that our, our actor, the ray actor, should be in that new location, rotating the reflection vector, ready to send off another cast. So what we want to do now is create another delay. The reason for this delay is if we don't have a slight delay, the engine will detect it as a, uh, a uh, infinite loop. But you can change some variable settings to kind of help with that, but just do it this way. All right, so now we have our ray finished. So what this is, is after it rotates and sets the location, it's gonna delay for a second and then start the cast all over again. Let's go ahead and save everything. And we're gonna move, uh, we want the ray spawner. Um, actually, let's go back to the top view. Which this isn't helping me any because I need it. There we go. So we'll basically start it right where the other one was. And we're gonna bring her up to where it's kind of in the middle here. Let's go do a side view just to make sure. Yep, right in the middle. All right, so now uh, some of the things that we did here is there is a camera. So this camera, as you can tell, is centered down over top of the maze. So you got a good orthopedic view, orthographic view. Um, in the level blueprint, we're just setting the view target to that camera actor on the first player controller, which is, you know, single player. So it's going to be the player that plays. So now if we press play, And look at those rays go. Uh oh. Oh, I see what else is happening. Okay. We need to set this volume, um, the end zone. Uh, what kind of is it overlap? Let's just go ahead and do a block all. And that should solve that and play. Boom, there it is. Okay. That's pretty simple. Um, one of the other things I did in the Ray Blueprint was uh, every time that it finished, I, whenever we're basically, after finishing it, casted the Ray again, I had it store the current location right at the beginning of this event. And I, once the list was made, I uh, drew the lines via the UI, so I use like a, a HUD uh, HUD class actor. A little more complicated. Um, enough of a request, I'll do a short little tutorial on how I did that in the original videos. But that is basically it. And as you can tell, after the two second delay, it's it's pretty quick. Bam. Reach the end. It's very quick. Um, that's pretty much that. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please uh, like, subscribe, leave some comments uh, for types of content that you want, and uh, that'll be all. Thank you.